What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 123 of Park to Prem here with Town or Town. Today we have a triple header. Yes, I know last episode I left things saying it would be a double header. I've had a change of heart so today we are going to do Chelsea, we're going to do Newcastle and we're also going to do Manchester United. So three games coming your way. And, uh, well, there's only been two games since we last here, so shall we hop into those? Uh, the first of these was against Sheffield United, away from home at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United, the team on the cusp of a top-half finish. They are very much pursuing, um, really, what our goal was at the start of the year in terms of a top-half finish. So a great win against them there. Uh, Leskinen getting a goal kind of fell to him nicely. Dylan Turnbull then with a tidy little finish. They got a consolation with about half an hour left, but we held on for the win. And then we took on Roma, where we completely rotated our team, and when our B team nearly won us this game. Charlie Brown with a really nice near-post header to get us off the mark. However, Taroni for them in added time, just inflicting heartbreak, basically. Um, obviously, we already knew we'd win the Europa League group. A bit of a shame that we couldn't hold on for a romantic win in Rome. But, well, you know what? Some sometimes things don't quite go your way. Anyway, I talked about it a little bit last episode, but the facilities have been upgraded. They're going to be upgraded again, which is obviously fantastic. And, well, speaking of fantastic stuff, I have to talk about Makovsky. Now, he is listed as our kind of hot prospect at the club. He's currently on loan at Derby County. He's 19 years old. He's played 16 Premier League games this year for them. I really, really like the look of this guy. I don't know if I even like the look of him as a left-back. I actually think as a centre-back. That could be his calling, if only his heading was a tiny weeny bit better. Nevertheless, as a fullback, he's still a very good player, although has he got the complete ability to play complete wing back? Not entirely sure, not entirely sure. We'll keep an eye on him, obviously great to see him playing regular first team football out on loan. And uh, well, hopefully he's going to really benefit from that. He has already improved a lot this year. In terms of team news for today's first game against Chelsea, not great. Andre is out and Ox is out. Volta is still injured. We have got a bit of an issue with the left wing back position. And the issue is that I am currently training Deacon to play left wing back, but it's taken him a little while to pick it up. He's currently unconvincing. But the only other option I've got a left wing back is Brandon Williams. And, I mean, he's 32 and his physicals are starting to fall off a cliff a little bit sooner than I even expected. I almost feel like it's better to play Deacon slightly out of position rather than play Brandon Williams for this game. So that is how we are going to approach things. As I said, three games coming your way today. Chelsea, Newcastle and Manchester United. The reason for wanting to do these three is, firstly, I know you, that you guys like it when we do a load of live comms. But I am also very mindful of the fact that earlier on this year we beat Liverpool and Arsenal off camera. And then what should probably be an easier against game against Tottenham, we lost. And I know that people look at that and go, Jack, you just you just save scumming, you're cheating. Uh, if you play football match, you know how random results can be at times. I, w I wish I had the time to repeatedly play out matches to get desired results. Um, but with that in mind, I didn't want to play this Chelsea game, uh, win it, and then come back and lose against Newcastle and Manchester United. So hopefully... We're going to get a win against one of the big dogs. Of course, if you watched last episode against Tottenham, you kind of saw how that game played out. I am going to bring in McCassie, I think, for this game. But yeah, if you watched last episode, you know how the game against Tottenham played out. It was disappointing to lose it, but we were the dominant team throughout. We were the better team throughout. And well, I'm hoping today we can get a bit of revenge against Chelsea. Because... Yeah, they they beat us. We owe them after last game. They beat us 3-0 in the EFL Cup, just as a reminder. We have got them in the FA Cup in a couple of weeks' time as well. A good win here would definitely help us out. Worth noting, their goalkeeper is carrying an injury. They are risking it for a chocolate biscuit. And, well, we need to defend this here. Are we going to defend? No. No, we're not going to defend it. It's Greg Watson, our deep-line playmaker for England, with the tap-in. And, well, I'll be honest, folks. After five minutes, it's not exactly what I had in mind when I was kind of planning out this fixture and thinking about how things were going to go. This is not the start to the match that we needed in this game. I was hoping for, well, not, us not to concede right away. <laughs> I, know, I know that's a very low benchmark that's set, just not to concede right away. It's going to have to be an early shouty shouty, isn't it? We've got a set piece here. Leskin, and what can you do? He whips in Soretta. I mean, it's a shame the keeper's not got a more serious injury because he looked quite competent catching that. But a half chance from a set piece, and at least we've had a chance now on goal. They're going to lump the ball forward here to Bittner. Of course, their star German striker. Don't let him score. Matthias Aurelio lumps it clear to Fry. A few of our English players in, in the England squad play, don't they, for Chelsea? Fry is another one of those. 
Uh, he plays left back, of course, and he, he looked quite menacing going forward then, all the way until he needed to get it into the back of the net. Anyway, if you're listening to my voice and thinking it sounds a bit weird, which, I mean, it sounds weird normally, but my voice is feeling a little bit raspy, and given the, the current situation in the world, I'm a little bit mindful of getting a sore throat at the moment, so let's hope it doesn't turn into anything, but as a result, I am going to skip the bits between the matches today. Um, I'm just going to cut them out because I'm a bit scared that my voice might not last all the way till the Manchester United game, if we don't do that. I'm a bit scared our squad might last and not last until the Manchester United game with the way that we are playing here. I mean, Morrigan, fantastic stop to turn around the post. There is a voice in the back of my head saying, Jack, you should be playing the more defensive style here against Chelsea. You should be showing them a little bit of respect. And you know what? I think that, I think that voice is probably right. So we're going to make a bit of a minor change. Please don't get sent off Matasevich. That's definitely not what we need. But no, we're going to switch to the slightly more defensive counter attacky system. Just see if we can weather the storm a little bit. Because Chelsea have been on top in this game in the first 20 minutes. I feel like we need to change something. Well, Makassi wins it. Turnbull. I mean, it's a great win by Makassi. But I feel like there he has displayed his 11 or 12 passing. He isn't the best passer of the ball. And having won the ball superbly there, you expected him to thread the ball through perfectly in... He didn't. And now they're bringing the ball forward here. Daniel to Bittner. Great save by Morrigan again. Someone give him a certificate or something. Give him a coconut. I don't know why he'd want a coconut. I don't know. Morrigan, he loves his coconuts, does Morrigan. He doesn't drink regular milk, only coconut milk. It's true, true stories about our goalkeeper. Anyway, whilst I'm talking rubbish, our defenders need to do more than rubbish on the pitch. We need to defend this here. We are a little bit... Back against the wall right now, aren't we? Daniel with it. Deacon, of course, sliding in at left back. He's looking a bit frustrated at the moment, and now he's got an injury. It's like the game's trying to force me into playing Brandon Williams at left back. Anyway, we win the ball in with Makassi. Shvetsov looked offside, and that's because he was offside. The linesman's flag goes up. That is not going to count. But at least we're showing signs of life, although... That is only our fourth shot of the game. It was very, very tight there. Wow. I mean, a nice header off the crossbar as well. Nothing more satisfying than a shot on goal that ricochets off the underside of the woodwork. Now Watson with a set piece. And that is bending like Beckham. I mean, Morrigan, I don't think he needed to save that. I think it was going wide, but it's one for the cameras. And now we have a corner to deal with. We are being called into a lot of defensive action in this game. Ever since we conceded that early goal, I feel like we've halted the momentum a little bit. You know, we could have easily had the floodgates open and the goals come flowing in. It's not really happened yet for Chelsea, which is good. Obviously, we need to try and hit them on the break once and take an opportunity. And you thought for a second an opportunity might fall our way. It might now go their way or the game might just decide to call it quits and say that's the end of the replay. At half time, only 1-0. I don't know what it is about live comms. We have a weird thing about losing against big teams 1-0. We lost against Man City earlier in the year 1-0. We lost against Tottenham last episode 1-0. I feel like it was a recurring theme last season as well, these narrow defeats. Well, we don't really find a breakthrough. We don't really find a goal. Let's hope we can find ourselves on the score sheet at some point in this game. Because without a goal, well, we're going to lose because we've already conceded one. What can Auger do here? The answer is lose it to Bittner, who's very, very scary. You can't let him throw a goal. I mean, Morrigan, you are bailing us out right now. If there's ever a financial crisis in the year 2030, whatever, Morrigan's the man to bail everyone out. You know what? I feel like we need to go more attacking again. I'm going to make some personnel changes here. I am going to take off Matasevich and I'm going to bring in Alvarez. Shvetsov and Turnbull have been poor. You know what? Secret weapon, Charlie Brown. Onto the pitch you go. And I don't have a left wing back. Unless I want to bring in Brandon Williams, which I don't want to do. So we're going to go with an early double change in the midfield here. We're going to get a little bit shouty-shouty as well for good measure. Let's hope that we can get a win here. <laughs> I feel like we, this is a game that we could turn around. And while maybe Deacon can do something at left back, it's ricocheting around. Unfortunately, it's just not fallen our way there. But, I mean, it's a bit, little bit concerning when our left-back has the best chance of the game. He's now looking frustrated. Do you know what? I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm sorry that I played you out of position. I'm sorry that I'm trying to teach you to play left-back. Brandon Williams, you might be old. You might be losing all your physicals. But you are our best bet at this moment in time with Ox out suspended. 
I mean, the silver lining here is that he will be back for the game against Newcastle, so we've got that going in our favour. Can we win the ball high up the field here, or are we about to be in danger? Brandon Williams, what can you do at left back? Let him get a... Oh, my word. It's the most insane goal I've seen all year. I don't even want to look at it. Just got my hands covering my eyes. Matias El Rezo, what a nuts goal. I could try and commentate this, but this is one of those ones where I think you just need to watch it. I mean, he hits it on the volley and the ball, it just doesn't dip. It's just constantly on an upwards trajectory until it crashes into the back of the net. I mean, GCL, you're meant to be good against Chelsea. What are you doing here, lad? I'll tell you what he's doing here. He's thinking about all the Chinese teams that have been showing an interest in him recently. And now Brandon Williams gets left on, in, on injured. We're down a man. You know what? Just write off this game. Just write it off. I know we're down a man and I probably should have changed the system or the tactics or something to so solve it. I'm just upset. All of our left backs have injuries or are suspended right now. Let's hope that's not a serious injury for Brandon Williams. Otherwise, I think I know what we might be requiring come January. Deacon as well could be injured as well. It finishes 2-0 to Chelsea. A disappointing performance. Brandon Williams out for four to five weeks. Deacon out for one. You had a bruised shin. You cried all that much and were showing like negative body language for a bruised shin. Tell you what, they don't make shin pads like they used to. That's all, that's all I've got to say on the matter. Anyway, I'm going to jump forward to the game against Newcastle. We've not got the longest rest here because it's going to be the Friday night kickoff. It's away from home, a tricky away leg. Let's go and see what we can do against them and hopefully we can get a win because if we don't win here, to get a win in this episode, we're going to have to beat Manchester United. And that doesn't feel likely right now. Okay guys, so we're back here for match number two of this triple header and I thought before we got into the game against Newcastle United it was worth a little crew watch. Yes, of course, crew, our affiliate, relegated down to the Skybet League 2 last year. They are currently top of the league and running away with it. You can see 49 points they have. They're doing pretty well, although actually in terms of the average ratings, none of our players on loan at them are doing the business for them. You can see here Akhazamani has uh, played 26 games. Danny Swan, the 19-year-old, has shown a little bit of development. Not a great deal, if I'm honest. Darren Budd is doing his thing up front, a player who I will probably look to sell on, I think, at the end of the year. And last but not least, Graham Blanford, who of course was one of the big, hot, exciting prospects just a couple of years ago when he joined the academy. Currently looks like the real deal. He's capped for the England under-19 side. And as you can see here, he's improving a blooming lot, which is very, very exciting indeed. So keep an eye out for him. Now, of course, today we are going to be playing against Newcastle United, which, if we just look at the league table, is going to be a fourth versus 17th for fair. I did not quite realise how much of a relegation fight Newcastle are in. They are going to be desperate for wins here especially at home. Of course, with a win here, we could leapfrog Chelsea, who did go ahead of us with their win that they got against us. You can see they've scored, well, they've not scored necessarily, but their goal difference is twice as good as ours, which is a little bit upsetting to see. Any kind of defeat here, and suddenly Liverpool will be hot on our heels, and Tottenham really aren't that much further behind. If we want a top four finish this year, we're going to need to win the next two games we've got in this episode. We've got Newcastle here, which... I think is more winnable, but then of course the game against, I guess, Manchester United you look at with a little bit more fear. Anyway, worth noting here, some players are suspended, so Leskinen, one of our key players, is unavailable. Deacon can go in at right back today, which I'm sure he will be delighted about. We're looking a little bit light at the back, so Samuele Maggi, someone asked recently, how what's happened with Maggi? He's still at the club, he's still doing his magic acts. Keeps the morale high in the dressing room, um, but he is at this point kind of fifth choice centre back. So, I mean, how often do you need your fifth choice centre back? The answer is not particularly off often. Also, with less going out, we're going to bring Makassi onto the bench. That does mean I'm going to go with Andre and Lazarus as a centre mid duo. Volta still isn't really fit, so Alvarez, you'll come in for him as I misclick. Um, and I think this is how we'll line up for this game. We've got options, certainly. Worth noting, just two players who I've not really talked about a great deal, but I do want to keep around at the club because I think they've got really good potential. And also, I need more homegrown at club players. We've got Son Jung-woo here, who is a South Korean international. 
naturally a striker, although we're training him to play box-to-box -box midfielder. I feel like of all the players I've ever converted to box-to-box -box midfielder, he's probably the most obvious as to why you would want to do it. But he's doing okay. And the other player that we've got who we're doing a similar job with is Christian Castro, although he's more of a natural centre mid already. But two 18-year-olds, two players who play for their men's national teams at the highest level already, um... Two players who I don't really want to loan out because we do need more homegrown players at club. Between them, they've had a handful of appearances. And to be fair, they've done okay when we've given them opportunities. But anyway, this is the team that I think we're going to go with for today's game. Although Shvedsov's form has been poor. So you know what? Palazzolo, come on down and have a go if you think you're hard enough. I feel, I feel like we need to give Palazzolo more chances. He is definitely better than Charlie Brown on paper. And in terms of goal scoring return, we've certainly seen that as well. Is he quite up to the standard of Turnbull and Shvetsov? I would say he's a little bit behind them, but really not a great deal. He's quite a different striker. Both, you know, Turnbull and Shvetsov are very, very athletic. They're very, very quick. Uh, Turnbull certainly has that kind of physicality to his game as well. He's quite good in the air and good strength. However, I would say that um, Palazzolo is just a very, very good kind of in the air. Not particularly quick, but just extremely technically gifted. That looked offside. It wouldn't have been offside. Okay, well, that's a warning shot in our direction as Loda gets a free header. Looking at their team, they've got Maldini, Maldini's son. They've got Joe Gomez and Zinchenko as well. Two players who will now be in their early 20s in their back line. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suspect that they might be a little bit slow. So that might be something that we can look to potentially exploit. Going to get a little bit shouty-shouty early on here. Of course, this is a big local derby, really. This is... The Battle of the Northeast Stripes, and we want to be the team that come away with it as the ball is launched towards Turnbull from that throw in. It's cleared away ultimately for a corner. Can we make anything of the corner? That is the question. That was apparently a clear cut chance, which usually means that the corner that follows it is just a pointless corner, corner highlight. Oh no, GCL. Oh no. Get, 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 save him. Save him. That's, that's bad, isn't it? Ah. Uh. Dusiel has just gone down, kicking through the ball and got a foot injury. Well, we've got Matasevic or we've got Alvarez. I'm going to bring in Matasevic. I might have to change the role away from advanced playmaker, though, because I really dislike his poor vision, teamwork, and composure. It's one of the reasons why I don't more often kind of play him as the attacking midfielder. So, you know, we'll, we'll change things up. We'll put him on attacking midfielder on attack rather than the playmaker. As we mentioned a few episodes ago now, that is something that we have been experimenting with. I'm trying to find a way to get more out of our centre attacking mid. Because our goal scorers and our strikers, they do superbly. But statistically at least, the, the centre attacking mid doesn't feel like it contributes as much as perhaps it should or could. Still not entirely happy, I'll be honest, with the advanced playmaker either. I have been weighing up shadow striker as another option. Or alternatively, we just play with three strikers. Which probably is... Not the best of options, but three strikers in Football Manager is always fairly good. Just the way it lines up. Anyway, Deacon's been gifted the ball here from a goal kick. I don't know if the right back's the man you want in this situation. And well, judged by that finish, he's definitely not the man you want in that situation. Bearing down on goal, skews it wide of the post. It's all just a great big disaster, isn't it? Anyway, Auger goes short to Ox, who of course is missing for last game. Good to have a left back on the pitch. Highland dinks the ball to Ox, who nods it forward to Palazzolo. Lovely build-up play, hits the woodwork, Turnbull for a rebound. I mean, lovely build-up play. It's almost a shame that Palazzolo isn't rewarded with a goal for that, because that was such a nice move. But Dylan Turnbull sniffing around in the box, looking for some sloppy seconds, and he found the sloppy seconds. The ball on the floor, uncontested, he tucks it away. I feel a bit bad for the keeper. I feel like the defenders probably should be reacting a little bit quicker there. We have made a bit of a habit this year so far of winning by just a single goal margin. So I would like to score a goal or two more to kind of remove that as a thing. But it is something that I have noticed is the fact that we definitely do scrape by. Anyway, I'm going to bring in Makassi, I think, for Andre. And we've got one last sub. You know what? I'm going to take off Palazzolo and we're going to bring in Charlie Brown. Just for the last 15 minutes, Shvetsov can have a little bit of a break. Of course, the match following this, we've got Manchester United who spanked us last year. I want some revenge, but before we think about revenge, we've got to focus on this, because we're only a goal up, and they're on the attack, Chacken brings it forward, Deacon though, wins the ball, he looks a lot more comfortable, doesn't he, at right back, Charlie Brown, threading through Turnbull, he has the pace, has he got a finish in his locker, no he has not, Zinchenko gets it away, 
That probably should have been 2-0 there, shouldn't it, really? Goal at his mercy and a chance squandered. And now with four minutes of added time, I'm hoping this is not going to be a late highlight going in their favour. Turnbull quite kindly giving the ball back to the defender. Lazarus slides in and doesn't really win the ball, unfortunately, for us. Harper now bringing it forward, although Adrian Highland there reading it. And Deacon, what a ball forward. Turnbull, second time lucky. Can he do it? Of course he can. He slots it away. That is going to be game, set and match. Lovely ball by Kevin Deacon at right back. Turnbull with two goals to his name here. And against our local rivals, we're going to need a needed win. We've, we've not had a win for a little while in a live com. It's kind of the side effect, I guess, of commentating a lot of the big games. But the great news here is we're going to beat Newcastle. It's something that we've done the last few times we've been in the Premier League. But that doesn't make it any less sweet when we do it again. And, uh, well, 2-0... A great result there, and now we really have to hope that GCL hasn't got a long-term injury. We've always known with GCL that he was injury-prone. There was always the risk there. It was one of the reasons why I was only willing to part with £9 million for him. What is the injury going to be? Please don't be more than a couple of weeks. Four weeks? I mean, it could have been worse. What was the injury? Twisted ankle. I feel like on the scale of injuries, that is fairly minor, but... Yeah, that injury proneness is always a little bit of a concern in the back of my mind. Worth noting, I mentioned it before, there has been some transfer interest from Chinese teams. The, the fee that they've rumoured is about £50 million, which, you know what, I'd probably find hard to turn down for GCL. Despite how great I think he is, the injury proneness always kind of scares me a little bit. And it would be fair to say that his average ratings on the whole haven't really been super standout during his time for us here. But anyway, we've got one more game to play today. Let's get forward to that. It is Manchester United. It's away from home. I'm going to prepare for a spanking. You better be prepared too. Let's get to it. Okay, guys, so it's time for the last game of today's episode. I'm hoping that we can get one last good performance here. And even if we lose, I just want us to show a degree of competitiveness because I feel like against Chelsea, we really didn't do that. Now, we are going to be away from home against Manchester United, but... It's the 26th of December, so all of the you know the United players, they're going to be tired. They're going to have had their Christmas dinners yesterday. My players, disciplined, well-oiled machines of men. They're not having their Christmas dinners. They've sacrificed them so that we can get a win here. In terms of the team that we're going to go with, we are going to have to mix things up a little bit because GCL is out injured. Um, you'll notice at the back we are going to go with our standard back four, which for the first time all episode is here. Just one little thing that happened in the week since you were last here. Perhaps the greatest mag magic trick that Magi will ever do is this. We had an offer for him of £20 million. He's, he's turned himself into gold. How has he done this? Blackburn relegated from the Premier League last year, had bid £20 million for Magi. Yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll t it's the best, mag as I said, best magic trick he's ever done. The best magic trick in history, perhaps, to turn himself into a £20 million player. But you know what? We're not going to complain. Worth noting, Stoke have a little bit more of a grip on reality. They only bid £10 million for him. But anyway, let's submit our team for this game. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tricky. If you've played Football Manager for the last decade, you know how it is. You go to Liverpool, you go to Man City... Or you go to Manchester United away from home, you kind of just clench up and hope that you get through it okay without being completely destroyed. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Of course, last year when we played them, we had a, a Manchester United player sent off within the first 10 minutes. And we still got absolutely spanked. I think it finished 6-4 or 7-4. It was a weird game. I don't think we're going to be expecting quite the same kind of result here but let's hope that we can come through and get a win I don't know if we've even beaten Manchester United yet during our run in the Premier League I don't think we have is today the day I mean if Terega brings it forward you think maybe it's not although maybe we can do some defending here oh my word I mean Wolverton recently got his first ever England call-up courtesy of myself obviously he knows I'm in the ground he's probably going to want to give us a bit of a show here I've just realised that they are playing a 4-1-4-1 system. Now, they are top of the league with it, but it is making me think, if I should go to my attacking system, what has their keeper done? Oh, it's Alvin John in goal as well, who's another one of the England players. I mean, it's not looking great for him, is it, <laughs> as our starting keeper? I was about to say, you know, maybe I should go more attacking. They're playing a 4-1-4-1. 
I mean, we've just been gifted a goal there. Shvetsov, his 11th of the year. Mateus Aurelio, superb little long throw from him. You know what? I might live to regret this because we're a goal up. I'm going to play the attacking system because they are playing a formation which I think really plays into our hands. Let's hope that's actually the way it transpires as they are immediately on the attack after the tactical change. They've hit the woodwork. Is it too late to go back? Maybe. Let's shout to Manmore more and see what comes of the next 10 or so minutes. The fact that they're on the attack again immediately does make me a little bit scared as Lazarus puts in a superb little tackle. He might not be the most technically or attacking what attacking wise kind of adventurous of box to box midfielders but he can defend canal lazarus good tackle from him there and then wolver right go back jack what were you doing what were you doing i'm an idiot i'm an idiot right i mean we scored from a set piece a long throw it wasn't like we were out playing them on the pitch but you know what the, the theory when you look at the teams lined up i think you could see the method in my madness but ultimately they have scored there and it's probably on me for tinkering with things they are playing this kind of 4-1-4-1 system but I guess their four midfielders are playing very very attacking which felt like the way our shape lines up it would work out quite nicely against them but as we've just learned there maybe that's not the case so let's go back to the more defensive style of play and see what we can do here if we score another now I'm not changing it again I've learned my lesson a nice little bit of passing build-up play here. Look at these triangles. You love to see it. Matteo Aurelio to Andre to Volta. Look at it. Count the passes. I wish I'd started at the beginning. We'll, we'll, we'll pretend it's still the same passing sequence. Technically, the United defender did touch the ball there. Shvetsov. I mean, Turnbull is in the box. Shvetsov might not need him. Oh, my word. Alvin John, you are having an absolute Western Superman in goal. But we do find ourselves 2-1 up here. Shvetsov with another goal to add to his collection. I feel like that's a little bit of a gift. I also feel like at this point I need to explain the Western Supermare thing. Basically, if you're having a mare, it's like having a nightmare. There's also a seaside resort in the UK called Western Supermare. So if you're having a proper Western Super or a Western Supermare, you're having a nightmare. There you go. You've now learnt something new. Unless you watch me... And have been watching me for a few years, in which case that's not new information. What's also not new information is the fact I can't blooming beat Manchester United. It's now 2-2 here. And Mejbri has got the goal with his header. I mean, he's got... Look at his hair. That was like an extra two feet of jumping airtime for headers and stuff. It's not fair. 2-2 at the break. I'm a little bit annoyed with the way that that has ended. But you know what? We're being pretty fiercely competitive against the team cruising away at the top of the Premier League right now. Any kind of points that they drop against us is pretty big and would be a, a good result. We now have a set piece. Jano Leskin and whips it in. Oh my word, Andre, you cheeky bugger. Sneaking in at the back post. Nods it home. It's 3-2. I said at the start of this game it couldn't match the 7-4. I mean, there's still half an hour left. Maybe it could. Leskin whips in. OJ kind of misses his header, but Andre's just sniffing around at the back post for any second ball. Unmarked. Tucks it away. I feel like at this point I should be making some subs. You know what, Lazarus, you've not had the best of games. Let's bring in Matasevic. I'm also going to bring in Makassi, I think, for Volta. And then we'll play Andre down the middle. And we'll hold on to our last sub for now. Just getting a few fresh legs into the midfield. As Wolverden brings it forward, hits it into the side netting. Liverpool 4-0 up against Southampton. They're having a fun time, aren't they? That would make a win here even more important. Liverpool breathing down our necks. Need a win here, really, I think, to maintain our top four credentials. Ball whipped in, headed. Oh, Morrigan, please pick it. Pick it. Why are you not picking it up? It's fine. It's fine. Don't get angry at him, Jack. It's okay. I'm just a little bit stressed, everyone. I don't want to alarm you. Just, I'm on edge. Turnbull's picked up a little injury. Let's take him off. Palazzolo, you can come on for him. And then our highlight starts immediately. All because of this sub. It could be a disaster. Matteo Sorelio, you're on a yellow card. Behave. Naughty boy at right back. Anyway, Ruben with it. There you go. Palazzolo, he's won the ball. Run like the wind. Fresh off the bench. I mean, John actually made a save, which I guess is an improvement for him. Oh, that could have put the result beyond doubt. You have to wonder if that's one of the ch kind of chances where it's fallen to Palazzolo too soon after he's come onto the pitch. He's not fully warmed up. He's not up to 
speed, I guess, with the game. Anyway, there, could, could there be something else to happen here? Probably not. Just really realised that Rian Brewster is playing for them. That's upsetting, isn't it? Gives a 1-2. He's offside. We're fine. Former Liverpool man Brewster, of course. That's interesting to see him play for Manchester United. He's gone down the Michael Owen route. And, well, the, the game is just going to end without any highlights. That has caught me off guard. We've won against Manchester United. We've done it, everyone. We've won against one of the big teams in the league for the first time all year, away from home. I say all year. I mean all year in a live com. You can now see how we were able to beat Liverpool and Arsenal. I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved that we beat one of the big boys. Uh, Manchester United have been leapfrogged by us. You can see the top of the table here now. Manchester City, when 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 are you playing? Are you playing slightly later today? You are, right. Can Tottenham beat Manchester City? That is now the question that we're asking. If Man City win here, they are going to pull more than three points clear of the team in second. If Tottenham can do us a favour like they did when they beat us, they can't do us a favour. You're useless, Tottenham. What are you doing? You beat us and then lose to City. So you can see the league here. It's incredibly close. It looks like it's going to be another kind of top four fights down to the wire much like it was last year it's worth noting that actually all the teams at the top have got incredible incredible form i guess we have to include ourselves in that now but um yeah the the records at the halfway point of the season are as you can see here and if the top four were to maintain their current kind of point totals for the second half of the year it would be one of the record-breaking seasons for points at the top of the table obviously that's a challenge that is going to be laid out ahead of us we're going to have the european Europa League knockout stages to look forward to as well. And, uh, well, we have got a few big games, haven't we, next month? Liverpool and Manchester United and Man City. Oh, do we have to come back for another triple header? I did not realise all those games were together. I think we might. I think we might. Anyway, let me know. Would you like to see another triple header? I don't want to do too many matches. I don't want to make the episodes too long. Let me know what you think down below. Obviously, a great result against Manchester United, against Chelsea disappointing, the Newcastle result expected. The bottom line is we navigate through a few tricky fixtures. We now go into January. Hopefully, we can build up just a little bit of momentum ahead of that kind of trio of extremely tricky Premier League matches. Anyway, folks, that is all from me today. Thank you so much for your support, as always, here on the channel. Really do appreciate it. I hope to see you again tomorrow. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.